Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 51 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really well, we're almost halfway there. And then today we're going to focus on the topic of standard forms, so that way I've written very large numbers or very small numbers very quickly and easily. If you go to the Code Maths Revision cards, card number 80 is a really useful card on standard form, and it goes through the format which numbers have to be whenever you write them in standard form, and then it also sort of, if you scan the QR codes on the back, it brings you to the video tutorials and questions which give you more practice in standard form. But today we're going to through the topic of standard form, so let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at standard form. So standard form is a really useful way of writing very large or small numbers very quickly and easily. And here's part of the Corp Mouse Revision card. And if we've got a number that's in standard form, it has to be in this form, where we've got A, which is a number that's bigger than or equal to 1, but less than 10. So for instance, 8 or 9.2 or 1.77 and so on. Multiplied by 10 to the power of N, where N's an integer. So we've got a number between 1 and 10 multiplied by 10 to the power of a certain integer, a certain number. So for instance, 10 squared or 10 to the power of 7 or 10 to the power of negative five and so on so here we've got some numbers and i'm going to show you how to write these large numbers and these small numbers in standard form and then i'm going to give you some to track if you are confident with standard form feel free to press pause and write these numbers in standard form so let's start off with seven thousand so if we want to write seven thousand in standard form we need a number between one and ten so i'm going to choose seven and then we're going to multiply it by ten and we now just need to find the power so is it ten to the power of one ten to the power of two ten to the power of three ten to the power of 100 and so on so if we do seven multiplied by ten you get 70. If you do 7 multiplied by 10 squared, which is 100, you get 700. If you do 7 multiplied by 10 cubed, that's 7 times 1,000, which is 7,000. So it's going to be 7 multiplied by 10 cubed. And let's just explain why. If we had 7, which is in the 1s of the units column, if we want to move it three columns to the left, we'd need to multiply by 10, and by 10, and by 10 again. So that'll be 7 multiplied by 10 cubed. And that's it. So 7,000 in standard form would be 7 multiplied by 10 cubed. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So our next one, we've got 2,500,000. And if we wanted to write that in standard form, well, we need a number between 1 and 10. So this time we're going to choose 2.5. So we've got 2.5, and we're going to multiply that by 10 to a certain power. So if we've got 2.5, which is here, 2.5, and if we wanted to write that in standard form, we'd need to move the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 columns to the left. So it'll be 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. And just to recap, to do that question, we could consider 2.5 and just consider how many times or how many columns we need to move those digits to the left. So for instance, if we had 2.5, we need to move the 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 columns to the left. So we'd need to multiply by 10 and by 10 and by 10 and by 10 and so on. So we need to do 2.5 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, so we've had a look at how to write large numbers in standard form. Now let's have a look at writing some small numbers in standard form. So if we had 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, let's write that in standard form. So we need a number between 1 and 10. So we're going to use 4, and then we're going to multiply by 10 to the certain power. Now whenever it's a very small number, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and so on, it's going to have a negative power, because 10 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 0.1 or 10 to the power of negative 2 would be 0.01 and so on so we need to figure out how many columns we need to move the 4 to go from here to where we want it so that'll be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 columns so it'll be 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 7 and that's it now there is a bit of a shortcut for these ones a student once said to me well sir you've said it's 4 times 10 to the power of negative 7 but i've noticed it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 zeros so if you want to figure out what the power would be you just need to count the number of zeros in front of the the number so here there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 zeros in front of the number so i'm going to have 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 7 that's just a bit of a shortcut that my students said to me and it's the way that i find that i actually now do standard form questions when it's small numbers i just count the number of zeros in front of it and then just write that as the negative power Okay, so here, using that same approach, it would be, it's because it's 0.018, the number would be 1.8, because it has to be between 1 and 10, multiplied by 10 to the power of, now there's two zeros in front of it, so 1, 2, to the power of negative 2, and that's it. And just to recap, if you had 1.8, you'd need to move the digits 1, 2 columns, so that's why it'd be negative 2. And that's it, so that's how you write large numbers and small numbers in standard form. So here's some for you to try now yourself. So here's some numbers, can you write them in standard form? Okay, so the first one, 30,000, that's going to be 3 multiplied by 10 to the power of. So we've got the 3, we need to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 columns to the left, so it'll be to the power of 4. So 3 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4. And let's just check that, 10 to the power of 4 would be 10,000, times 3 would be 30,000. Fantastic. Okay, our next one, 1,800. So we need a number between 1 and 10, so I'm going to choose 1.8 multiplied by 10 to the power of. So if we had 1.8, we would need to move the digits 1, 2, 3 columns to the left. So it'd be 1.8 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3. And that's it. Okay, next we've got 0.002. 
So this is a small number, so it's going to be 2 is the number we're going to choose. Multiply by 10, and it's going to have a negative power. And then we just need to count the zeros. 1, 2, 3, so it's going to be to the power of negative 3. Or remember, if we need to move the 2 to here, we'd need to move it 1, 2, 3 columns to the right. And that's it. And finally, 0.000495, so it'll be 4.95 multiplied by 10 to the power of, we just count the zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the power of negative 4. And that's it. Okay, so we've looked at how to write ordinary numbers in standard form. Now let's have a look at how to write numbers in standard form as ordinary numbers. So let's write each of these as ordinary numbers. So that means write them out in full. And feel free now to pause the video and to write these numbers out in full as ordinary numbers. Okay, so let's start off with 2.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4. So if we want to write that out in full, we just need to move these digits four columns to the left. So starting off with 1, so that would be 27. And over time, that would be 270. Another time will be 2,700, and another time 27,000, and that's it. So 2.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4 is 27,000. Okay, next, 5.134 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7. So you need to move these digits 7 columns to the left. Okay, so I'm going to start off by moving these digits 3 columns to the left. So that'll be 5,134. And I need to move them another 4 columns to the left. So I'm going to add on 4 zeros. So the answer would be 51,340,000. And let's just check that. If it was 5.134, if the decimal point was here, we'd move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places. Or we'd move the digits 7 places to the left. Okay, our next one's so the small numbers. Now these are quite nice. 8 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 2. So we would just put our two zeros in front, 0, 0.0, and then put our 8. So 8 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 2 would be 0, 0.08. And again, because we're multiplied by negative power, we're moving the digits to the right. So the 8 would move two columns to the right. So it would move to 0, 0.08 or 8 hundredths. And finally, 1.04 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 5. Again, because it's a small number and the power is negative 5, we can just put five zeros in front of it. So 0, 0.1234 and then 104. So that means that 1.04 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 5 would be 0.0000104. And that's it. So we've written numbers in standard form and we've written numbers in standard form as ordinary numbers. Okay, now let's have a look at some of our questions. Now sometimes you might be given a number that almost looks like it's in standard form. So here we've got 781.4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5. And you might be given a number like this which looks like it's in standard form but it's not and you're asked to write it in standard form. Now the reason that this number is not in standard form is the number at the front has to be bigger than or equal to 1 but less than 10 so between 1 and 10 uh, but this number isn't obviously between 1 and 10 it's much bigger so if we have a look here we've got 781.4 now I'm going to write 7.814 because that is between 1 and 10 and it'd be useful if I wanted to write a number in standard form now I've made this 100 times smaller I've divided by 100 here to get from this to this I've divided by 100 so if I've divided this by 100 I need to multiply this by 100 which means we're multiplying it by 10 and by 10 again so that means we need to increase the power by 2. So we're going to have 10 to the power of 7. So that's it. So if we had 781.4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5, that's not in standard form. But if I was asked to write it in standard form, I'd write 7.814 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7. Because I've just made that 100 times smaller, so I need to make that 100 times bigger. Okay, now here's one for you to try. This number's not in standard form, 0.0013 multiplied by 10 to the power of 8. That's not in standard form, but can you make it in standard form? Okay, so if I wanted to write this in standard form, we need a number between 1 and 10, so I'm going to choose 1.3 multiplied by 10 to a certain power. Now let's figure out what the power would be. Now in terms of this number at the front, we've made it, well, we've moved the 1, 1, 2, 3 columns to the left, so that means we've made it 10, 100, 1,000 times bigger. So we've multiplied this by 1,000, so if we multiply this number by 1,000, we need to divide this number by 1,000, so that means we're dividing by 10, and by 10, and by 10 again. So that means that we're going to be reducing the power by 3, so that means it'd be 10 to the power of 5. So if you got 1.3 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5, fantastic, because you're making this number a thousand times bigger, you need to make this one a thousand times smaller, so that means you're going to be reducing the power by 3. And that's it. Okay, we're now going to look at how to add numbers and subtract numbers in standard form. So here we've got work out 1.88 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5 plus 5.79 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. Now, the bad news is whenever you add numbers in standard form, there's no rule to just do it. So what I would do is if I was doing a question like this, I would tend to just write it out in full. So I'm going to write my 1.8 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5. So it's going to be 188. So I've moved the digits two columns to the left. I need to move them over three. So 1, 2, 3. So this number is 188,000. This number, well, I'd move them two columns to the left to be 579. And then I would need to move it another four columns to the left. So it's going to be 5,790,000. So 5,790,000. 
So we've written the numbers out in full. Now we just need to add them together. And I should have said work this out and write the answer in standard form. Um, so I'm just going to work this out and then at the end write in standard form. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 8 is 8. 9 plus 8 is 17. Put a 7 down and carry a 1. 7 plus 1 plus 1 is 9. And then 5. So the answer would be 5,978,000, or in standard form, it would be 5.978. And then I'd move the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 columns to the left. So it'd be 5.978 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. And that's it. So if you're asked to add or subtract numbers in standard form, I would typically just write them out in full and do the question. Okay, now let's have a look at subtraction. So here's a question now for you to try yourself. Can you work out the subtraction, the same approach, write them out in full and work it out? And can you work this out and then give your answer in standard form? So pause the video now and try this question. So 8.2 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5, well, that'll be 82. We've moved the digits one column, now another 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Subtract, and then we've got 9.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4. So we move it once, which should be 97, and then add on three zeros. So we've got 820,000, subtract 97,000. And when we work that out, we get 0 take away 0, 0, 0, and 0. We now need to borrow here, so that's now 10 take away 7, which is 3. And then we've got a need to borrow again, so that's now 11 take away 9, which is 2, and then 7. So the answer be 723,000. Now we want to give our answer in standard form, so that'll be 7.23. So it'll be 7.23, and we've moved the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 columns to the left. So it'll be 7.23 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5, and that's it. Okay, so we've looked at adding and subtracting numbers in standard form. Now let's have a look at multiplying numbers in standard form. So if we were asked to work out, now this is a non-calculator question, I'll give you a calculator one later. So if we were asked to work out 3 times 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by 8 times 10 to the power of 4, we can actually use our laws of indices to help us work this out. So if I was doing a question like this, I would do the 3 multiplied by 8 to begin with. So 3 times 8 is 24, so that's 24 multiply by 10. Now we've got 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by 10 to the power of 4. So they've got the same base, so we can just add the powers. 6 plus 4 is 10. So that means that 3 times 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by 8 times 10 to the power of 4 will be 24 multiplied by 10 to the power of 10. But remember, a number inside of form has to have a number at the front between 1 and 10. So we need to make this 10 times smaller to be 2.4. And if we make this 10 times smaller, we need to make this number 10 times bigger. So that'll be 10 to the power of 11. And that's it. So 3 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by 8 times 10 to the power of 4 would be 2.4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 11. And that's it. Okay, now here's one for you to try. Can you work out 5 times 10 to the power of 7 multiplied by 7 times 10 to the power of 2? Okay, so if we were to work this out, we would do 5 times 7, which is 35, multiplied by, and then we've got 10 to the power of 7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2. We're going to add the power, so it'll be 10 to the power of 9. Now, 35 is not between 1 and 10, so we need to divide by 10, so it's going to be 3.5. So we need that 10 times smaller, so we need to make this 10 times bigger, so it'll be 10 to the power of 10, just add in 1 to the power. And that's it, so the answer would be 3.5 times 10 to the power of 10. Okay, now it's also important to be able to do standard form on your calculator because you may encounter standard form in the calculator paper. So if I was asked to work this out and I had a calculator, I've had a model like this, and I'll show you a few other models in a minute. But if I had this model, I do like to include brackets, so I would press open brackets, I'd press 6, I'd then press the standard form button, I would then press 5 and close brackets, and then I would press multiply by, and then I would again open brackets, press 8, press the standard form button here again, press 7 and close brackets, and press equals. That's what I would do. I like including brackets whenever I'm doing standard form questions. And if I do that, it would give me the answer 4.8 times 10 to the power of 13. And it actually changed it for us, for, rather than being 48 times 10 to the 12, it writes it in standard form for us. So that's the approach that I would use for a calculator like that. Um, you might find that you might not necessarily need to include the brackets whenever you're doing it, depending on how you're typing it in, but I just like to include them. Uh, if you've got a calculator like this, again, the standard form button's in the same place there. Um, so and the brackets are in the same place. And if you've got this calculator here, this type of model here, the brackets are there and the standard form button's there. Now on this calculator, whenever you press the standard form button, it actually moves it up as a power. So it looks a bit better than the other ones. So you might actually find whenever you're typing this in, you might not need the brackets in there. I just still tend to type it in. It's just a force of habit for me. But if you'd actually want to exclude the brackets, test it out and just check if you're getting the same answer. And you should do. Okay, and that's it. Okay, now here's one for you to try. So can you work out 1.47 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by 9 times 10 to the power of 4 and use your calculator to do that. And when you work that out, you'll get 1.323 multiplied by 10 to the power of 11. And if you got that, well done. 
Okay, so we've looked at how to multiply numbers in standard form. Now let's have a look at how to divide numbers in standard form. So if we were asked to work out 8 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7 over, or divided by, 4 times 10 to the power of 2, what I would tend to do in a question like this is divide the numbers at the front. So 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2, and then we've got multiply by. And then remember, whenever we're dividing things with the same base, we take away the power. 7 take away 2 would be 5, so multiply by 10 to the power of 5. So if we've got 8 times 10 to the power of 7, and we're dividing it by 4 times 10 to the power of 2, we can just divide the numbers. In this case, we've got 2, which is nice because it's between 1 and 10. And then we've got 10 to the power of 5, just taking away the powers. Okay, this is now one for you to try. So can you try to work out 3.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5 divided by 5 times 10 to the power of negative 2? Okay, so if I was in a question like this, again, we're going to do the division at the front. So we're going to do 3.5 divided by 5. So how many 5s go into 3? 0 remainder 3. And how many 5s go into 35? 7. So it's going to be 0.7. And then we've got multiplied by 10 to the power of. And now we just need to take away the powers because we're doing 10 to the power of 5 divided by 10 to the power of negative 2. So if we take away the powers, we'll get the power. So 5 subtract negative 2. 5 minus minus 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. So that'd be 0.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7. Now we want to make this number at the front between 1 and 10, so we need to make this number 10 times bigger. And if we make that number 10 times bigger, we need to make this number 10 times smaller, so it'll be to the power of 6. So it'll be 7 times 10 to the power of 6, and if you got that, well done. Okay, and just before we finish off, I want to have a look at a question in a situation or in a context, because this with standard form, you might find that sometimes you might encounter context with it. And that's why it's important today to try the practice questions. So here we've got an asteroid travels at 80 kilometers per second. So 80 kilometers per second, so that's 80 kilometers per second per second and we're asked how far does the asteroid travel in a day and to give our answer in meters and in standard form so what we're going to do is i'm going to work out how many kilometers it travels in a day to begin with so we know it travels 80 kilometers every second so if we want to find out how far it travels in a minute that means we multiply by 60 so we take our 80 and we multiply by 60 because that will tell us how far it would travel in a minute so if we do 80 multiplied by 60 so that's equal to 4800 kilometers and that's how far it travel in one minute now we know how far it travels in a minute let's find out how far it travels in an hour so let's multiply that by 60 to see how far it travels in one hour so let's take our 4800 and multiply that by 60 and see how far it travels in an hour and if we multiply by 60 that's equal to 288,000 kilometers so that's how far it travels in one hour so this is quite a fast asteroid it's traveled 288,000 kilometers in an hour now we want to find out how far it travels in a day so we're going to need, and I need to multiply this by 24 so if we take our 288,000 kilometers and multiply that by 24 that's going to be equal to multiply by 24 that's equal to 6,912,000 kilometers and that's in one day that's fantastic so that's how many kilometers it travels in a day now the question is how far does it travel in a day give your answer in meters so let's convert this into meters and to convert into meters, we'll multiply by a thousand. So we'll add on three more zeros. So that'll be six, nine, one, two, zero, zero, zero. So that's in kilometers. Add on three more zeros, zero, zero, zero. So that's how many meters it travels in one day. Now, the question says to give our answer in standard form. So we need to give this number in standard form. So we need a number between one and 10. So, let's, so it has to be 6.912 multiplied by 10. Now we're going to then move the digits one, two, three, four, five five, six, seven, eight, nine columns to the left. So it'll be to the power of nine. And that's it. So our answer would be 6.912 times 10 to the power of nine meters. That's how far the asteroid would travel in one day. So that's just to show that you could encounter standard form questions in a situation. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to write numbers in standard form, how to write numbers that are in standard form as ordinary numbers, how to take numbers that are almost in standard form and make them into standard form, how to multiply numbers in standard form, how to divide numbers in standard form, how to add numbers in standard form, and also those wordy questions involved in standard form. It's one of those topics that I would highly recommend revising thoroughly. So if you have a look at the description below, there's a link to the practice questions because with standard form, you could get a straightforward one, just multiply these numbers and standard forms together, but it could be you've got a speed, distance, time question, or you might have one where you've got the circumference of planets and things like that. So I'd highly recommend you have a look at the practice questions. That'd be quite a useful one for you. But obviously, there's 51 days to go to your GCC Mavs exam. We're almost halfway there, so keep up the hard work. If you watch the video so far, fantastic. That's going to have a great benefit in terms of your, your confidence and how you get on with your Mavs. And, but also, just keep up things like your past papers, your revision in class, a revision at home, things like that. And all those will go together and hopefully mean that you're going to do fantastically well. So I'll see you tomorrow for 50 days to go to your GCC Mavs exam. Cheers. Bye.